Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is going to be around the term BOLU. Uh, as many of you are probably familiar with that term in the reselling community. Um, and I just wanted to talk about my thoughts on the term, uh, what my understanding of it is, uh, why I don't use it, and maybe some tips on how to find your own BOLUs in case you're interested in um, doing that. So if that sounds interesting, keep watching. If you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up before you leave. And if you aren't already subscribed, uh, feel free. It's, uh, it's nice to see. So first up, what is a, what is BOLO in case you're new? BOLO is, stands for be on the lookout. I believe it was a law enforcement term that resellers have taken on to basically share a new brand um, with whoever's following them on social media. I think it's kind of like the thrill of the hunt for a lot of people, like the thrill of finding a bolo, something that they haven't seen other people share or um, or they haven't themselves picked up, they haven't looked up comps. And it's kind of that thrill of like, yeah, I can't wait to share this on my social media uh, because it's content. <laughs> I, the, the only, the main problem I have with the word bolo, and I don't have a problem with people using it. I, I in fact, love when people share, um, is a couple things. The definition of bolo could be very different for me versus you. My definition or how I would use bolo if I did would be, it sells quickly. It has a high return. It is uh, something that is not the most rare thing ever where no one's going to be able to find it. Um, maybe an overlooked thing that some people just don't even think of looking up the label. Um, and it can evolve like a bolo today might not be a bolo tomorrow and something that's not a bolo today could be a bolo tomorrow. So, uh, I think that the, the intent behind it. So for me, if someone uses the word bolo and then I go and look it up and I'm like, but the majority of the items are only selling for 20 to 30. Um, I've never seen this brand. I might never find this brand. I don't know how helpful that is for me. Now, it could be uh, that, it, again, it's just a way to share a new brand by using that and getting attraction or attention to it, but that's just it. It's kind of a, I would, it's, it's not clickbait if you're truly sharing something, but I think people, it, it grabs the attention of people and I think that unfortunately, the majority of time I've ever seen someone share a bolo, it's not, it's not new to me. It's not worth much. It doesn't sell too quickly. And so it's not actually a bolo to me. And I'm not saying that for everyone. That's just what I've, I've seen as, as more common. So my thoughts on the word, I think it can be helpful, but I think that just sharing new brands can be helpful, whether they're how I would define bolo or how you would define bolo learning about new brands can just be helpful. An example of this is a brand that I saw out in the wild and I remembered someone and I was like, someone talked about this in a hall. I can't remember who, they didn't use the word bolo, but I saw it out in the wild. And while it was helpful to have that stand out and like, I 100%, if no one had talked about this brand, which I believe it was a piece apart, uh, very expensive brand, I would have 100% looked it up. And I think that's my thing is that bolos or chasing bolos is no better than just learning how to continually look things up in a thrift store. And in fact, if you're more focused on what other people are finding or looking for specific brands in a thrift store, you might be passing up really great gems. And so really, I think the term or the meaning behind bolo is great that people want to share, but it's not a consistent, uh, it's, it's not consistent to me of, of, of what it actually means. And what is the likelihood that someone else is going to find it? I'll give you a couple, uh, an example. This is something where I would maybe have posted this if I used the word on my Instagram and use the word bolo. I don't know if I've ever used the word bolo. Maybe I have, but I don't think I have. Um, uh, Anyways, I think I had this in a recent video, either before or after this, but this is a men's t-shirt. And when I was skimming through the t-shirts, I didn't recognize the label, but I saw this weird like pouch thing. I was like, what in the world? And it's got a label that I didn't recognize. And so I'm like, I could have kept going. It wasn't on sale. It was full price. I don't know, five bucks or something. I could have kept going, but I was like, huh, that's really unusual. If anything, I just want to know what the heck is this thing? 
well, sure enough, this is like a baby shirt. The dad puts the baby in the pouch, like a, yeah. I, I, yeah, I had never seen anything like that. Adorable photos, stock photos, but consistently they're selling between 30 to $50. And the retail is only like 69 or 67. So it's got a really strong resale value. There aren't that many out there, but it's got a really great sell-through rate as well. Well, I could have easily posted that and been like, Bolo, look, at, look for this brand. In a year and a half, I've never seen this. And I think that if anyone were to see this, they would probably do the same thing as me. It's like, what is that? What is that? Wait, let me look this up. What is this? So I don't think it's common enough where everyone's going to find it or easily find it. And I don't know if me sharing, other than maybe you would want it for your, your husband, uh, if you have a baby, I, I don't know what, I don't know what the value of me sharing. Now, what I do think the value of, of, of seeing new brands can bring and understanding the value behind those is just your normal hauls. Now I tend to watch hauls where they give approximate values. It's something I felt was missing before I started YouTube. Um, and so I started incorporating that and I'm seeing more and more people do that. And I think it's incredibly important to know, okay, this is really cute, but it's only going to sell for 15 to 20. That might be really cute, but you might not want to pick it up if you want an average sale price. So I think that, uh, something like this, I would show in a haul, I would show in a normal video. I'm not using the word bolo, but it's new and you might find some value in it and you might recognize it kind of like the Laura Von Geep example. She shared a piece apart. I remembered seeing it. But even if she hadn't shared it, the style of material, I would have looked it up regardless. So the other downside of Bolo is with brands that are maybe more common. And maybe it's a uh, style of Gap jeans. And you're like, wow, these Gap jeans are just like, they're flying for me. They've got great sell through. It's a great return on for a Gap item for a mall brand. And so you share it, like look out for these jeans. Well, then all of a sudden, because it is kind of a highly accessible brand, it might be pretty common out there. Now the, the, the market might get flooded. And uh, while I think that things are going to get fl flooded regardless if they produce a lot, um, it, it, sharing bolos in that term could be those people who just go find the bolos and it could, it could bring down the value. I do listen, I do watch, I do observe. I'm not offended when someone uses the word bolo, but I would never trust it without looking up comps. So if someone says, oh, you gotta keep an eye out for, for this brand, and I find it, it's not gonna say that they're wrong in, in sharing that it's a great, great brand to pick up, but I'm still gonna look up and see what those comps are for myself. Because again, comps can range so drastically. Understanding sell-through rate might not be something that everyone applies into their sourcing strategy. And so I'm still going to do my own work involved with it. The, probably the biggest thing with Bolo is if you can't find it, why does it matter? Um, I live two hours north of a major metropolitan area that I'm always finding new brands and I'm finding sometimes more rare brands. But if I was just sourcing in my town, my area, I would not find anything besides just regular mall brands at all, like nothing abnormal or, or unusual. And so if I'm not able to find it, why am I focused on the bolos if, if I don't live in an area? So, and even if I do live in an area, I think again, it's just figuring out how to find them yourself. Um, and then, you know, lastly, and I think I, I may have mentioned this, I, I might not agree with your bolos. So if it's someone that's a friend that I know, or someone I've watched a lot of content, and I know they're picking up those items that sell for an average sale price. If they say these are 10 bolos to keep an eye out for, uh, you know, I'll probably chime in and, and not chime in, but like watch and see, but it's more the new brands for me. It's, it's, it's not really about the term bolos. So, and again, you might have your own thoughts on the, the word. Again, it, it might not go for a lot, but it sells quickly. And that can be a really great thing if you don't want to hold on to inventory. There's a lot of different factors, but for me, I just want to keep learning. The most important, and this is this last section, is how to find my own bolos. So I remember watching someone, you know, there's people that don't like my content and there's content that I don't watch or care for because I watch one video and they say something and I'm like, wow, really? And I remember there was someone who said, oh, you should go check out this person. And so I went to go check out this person. And in this video, they said, I don't look things up in a thrift store. And I, I, I just about fell out of my chair. Now you might not pick up or you might not look things up in the thrift store either, but I, I look up so much in thrift stores. 
I, although there are brands that I don't need to look up, I've sold consistently, I, I can kind of know the approximate value. Uh, there are so many brands that I pick up and put in my cart. And at some point when I need a break, I'll just rummage through and kind of look certain things up and have my yes pile, my maybe pile or my no pile. And, and, and so I, for me, it was so, what do you mean you don't look up things in a thrift store? How do you find those really, we are losing power. I just had to touch the screen, but we are losing power. So I'm almost done with this, but I was so blown away. And I, and, and, and although I think that you can, you can choose to source any way you want. I think it's an incredible disservice to suggest that looking things up is, is not a great thing to do and ongoing. It doesn't matter how long you've been a reseller. There are always new brands to look up. Maybe less and less. I, I look less and less things up each time, but I always look things up. And so I, I've never watched that person since because I thought that, wow, we just have a very different business model and you might have a different business model than me. But I do think that finding your own bolas is what makes it fun and to share or not to share. I think it's on you. I share 95% of what I pick up, but there are some things I don't share. And I think, uh, I think that's okay. They might be more common. They might just be, I don't want to oversaturate. Um, or, you know, it's, it's, I'm testing it out and I don't want to, it was, it was a, it was a risk or something along those lines. But when I want to find my own bolos, when I'm going through a thrift store or at the bins, looking for labels that stand out, but also quality and material and style. So there's a lot of fast fashion that can become trendy and fun, but is there something unique about it? So if there is something unique, if the label, I wouldn't say look up every label because you'd be there all day, but if the label looks unique, if the style looks interesting, maybe it's worth a shot to put that in your lookup pile if, if you're out and about and, and stand there and look it up. I have no problem, any employee or any other patron of a thrift store seeing me look up stuff, zero. Um, and if you're new, it might feel really uncomfortable. You kind of want to hide, but most people don't care. And a lot of them know about resellers and some of them are resellers. So it's all, it's, it's, it's all part of the process. Another way if you're not outsourcing, but maybe you want to just learn about new brands, watch hauls, obviously, by people who maybe pick up unusual things. That's why I'm doing a whole new, these are new brands to me because I think that that's what's interesting to me. But you can also go to places like The Real Real or ThreadUp to see what the resale market of certain brands is by sorting high to low, um, seeing popular styles that they're talking about. Now keep in mind, they have different platforms, they have different types of shoppers. So just because it sells well for them doesn't mean it will translate. So if you see a brand that's selling really great on The Real Real or ThreadUp, maybe still look up comps on, on eBay and Poshmark to make sure that that translates. But it's, it's easy to just sit in the comfort of your own home and learn about new brands. Um, you can also go to some major retailers like Nordstrom, Bloomingdale's, uh, some of those, and see what are some of these higher ticket items selling for, and then go check the resale market. Now, again, it could be like a brand like Splendid sells an astronomical amount, at least in my opinion, for kind of some basics, does not have a strong resale on most items. So it doesn't translate 100%, but it's a great way to see new brands and look things up on, on your own. And I think lastly, if you wanna share bolos and that makes it fun for you, absolutely. I don't think there's harm in sharing. I think for me personally, I would rather find the bolos on my own and I would just rather people share brands for me um, because it's, it's, it's kind of let me determine if I think it's a bolo or not because our definition of bolo might be different. Um, and that's okay because we all have kind of different business models. So that's it. That's my thoughts on the word. Definitely let me know your thoughts below in the comments um, because I think it's, it's, it's a hot topic of if it's a good thing or a bad thing. And I don't think it's either. I just don't particularly use it myself, probably won't. And um, I think there's ways to just find your own and you know, just do your own thing. So anyways, I'll see you guys, guys in the next video. Hit the thumbs up before you leave and bye.